The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The word of God we want to consider today again is our Old Testament reading for this past Sunday. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 5 verses 3 to 7 today where the Lord responds to Isaiah's love song to him. The Lord says, Now you dwellers in Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more could have been done for my vineyard than I have done for it? When I looked for good grapes, why did it yield only bad? Now I will tell you what I'm going to do to my vineyard. I will take away its hedge and it will be destroyed. I will break down its wall and it will be trampled. It, I will make it a wasteland, neither pruned nor cultivated, and briars and thorns will grow there. I will command the clouds not to rain on it. And then Isaiah closes the reading. The vineyard of the Lord Almighty is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah are the garden of his delight. And he looked for justice, but saw bloodshed for righteousness, but heard cries of distress. My dear friends in Christ, Isaiah began Sunday's Old Testament reading, as I mentioned, with this love song for the Lord, expressing his love for the Lord who had done just such great and wonderful things for his vineyard, thinking there about God's chosen people, the Israelites, and the vineyard back then was them. Today, the vineyard would be God's chosen people, his believers today, that includes us. Well, the Lord responded to Isaiah's love song by saying, Now you dwellers in Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard, what more could have been done for my vineyard than I have done for it? You know, parents often ask this same question when they're thinking about how they deal with their children and, and especially thinking about how they deal with their children when they get into trouble, when they have problems, when they would need discipline. Parents often look at the situation and, and wonder, well, have I done enough for my children? And well, sometimes they also have to ask, have I done too much for them that what I've done caused problems, what I haven't done caused problems? But when the Lord asks here, what more could have been done for my vineyard than I have done for it? What we'd always have to say is that the Lord always did just what he needed to do. The Lord always did just what he needed to do. And, you know, it really would be a good idea for parents when they think about their dealing with their children to just simply keep on going to God and asking God for his help and his wisdom and his guidance so that as they deal with their children, when they're good and when they're bad, that they would do not too much and not too little in caring for them. But of course, when it comes to parents, there's no such thing as a perfect parent. But when we think about our Lord, when we think about our Heavenly Father, what we have to say about Him is that He always shows us perfect love, always doing the right thing. Parents struggle with that. God, he always shows perfect love. And the love, the care, and the concern that God showed for the Israelites back at the time of Isaiah, back in Old Testament times, well, throughout their history, the love, care, and concern that God showed for his people was always perfect. And what we'd also have to say is that the love and the care and the concern that God shows for us, well, that's always going to be perfect as well. But now the Lord says here, when I looked for good grapes, why did it yield only bad? 
And when the Lord asked that question, understand that he definitely knew the answer to that question. He wanted to see good fruit. He wanted to see good fruits of faith in the lives of his believing children, of his people. But he also knew that they were sinners. And because they were sinners, he knew that wouldn't all be good fruit. There would be the bad fruit. And now when you think about the Israelites, what you'd have to say is some of them were unbelievers. And if some of them were unbelievers, well, then the fact is, is that they couldn't produce good fruit. And, and then some of them were believers. Some, by the grace of God, were believers. But, but even as believers, well, what does Isaiah say? He says that all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. And so even the believers, they couldn't be showing perfect love. They couldn't be exhibiting perfect fruit in their lives. And now what we say about the Israelites, that's still true in our world today. Some people, and well, here we'd have to say many, if not most people in our world are unbelievers. And since they're unbelievers, and since the Bible says that without faith it's impossible to please God, well, if somebody's an unbeliever, that, that doesn't mean that he's necessarily committing what we call gross sins all the time, but yet there's sin in his life. And without faith, even the good things that we would attempt to do would still be displeasing to God because of the absence of, of faith. But in our world, so many unbelievers, and they can't please God. And then there are some believers, and those of us who are believing children of God, what we'd have to say of ourselves, just like the Israelites, that all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. So there's going to be the bad fruit. But now, when God was looking at the Israelites years ago, and when God is looking at us today, what he's always doing is always figuring out the best way to deal, well, then with the Israelites, today with us. And, and when he figures out what to do, when he determines what he's going to do, he's always going to be showing us his perfect love, always doing the right thing thing for us. And see now what God's plan is, is that ultimately he'd get all of us believers home to heaven with him forever. And he also wants to keep on reaching more and more unbelievers and bringing them into his believing family so that they'd be with him forever in, in heaven as well. And our Lord is always doing his work in the best possible way. Always. In our reading, he says, Now I will tell you what I am going to do to my vineyard. I will take away its hedge, and it will be destroyed. I will break down its wall, and it will be trampled. I will make it a wasteland, neither pruned nor cultivated, and briars and thorns will grow there. I will command the clouds not to rain on it. Well, God took his blessings away from the Israelite people. And well, when he describes giving them this vineyard on this hill, beautiful hillside, it's talking about the promised land. And well, what God did is God, God allowed the Babylonians to come on in and, and destroy Jerusalem and the temple and, and carry off the people into a Babylonian exile that lasted for 70 years. And, and then 70 AD after Jesus was crucified and after he rose from the dead and ascended into heaven, well, years after that, what happened is that God in again allowed the Romans this time to come on in and to destroy Jerusalem. But even in such drastic treatment, well, that taking away its hedge, breaking down its walls, making it a wasteland like that. What our Lord always was doing was showing his people his perfect love. 
He was always doing what really needed to be done for his people to, well, ultimately call more people to faith and to get believers to heaven forever. Well, in our Lord's dealings with us, likewise, he always is showing us his perfect love. It's sad that we, because of our sins, will make it necessary all too often for God to show his tough love to us and discipline us. But, but isn't it great to know that our Lord, he is always knowing how best to deal with us and the way he deals with us is, is always the best. Again, it's tragic that we make it necessary for him to use tough love and discipline us at times, but, but the Lord knows what best to do for us. Well, Isaiah says here, the vineyard of the Lord Almighty is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah are the garden of his delight. And now when he's talking here, he's saying the Israelites, his chosen people, they were the garden of his delight, and today we are the garden of his delight. As believers, that's what we are, the garden of his delight. And our Lord is always going to do just what he needs to do to get his people to get us to heaven. Jesus living and dying and rising from the dead for us, well, and paying for our sins and winning for us heaven, that's all the proof we need. That's all the proof that we need that our Lord, he's always showing us his perfect love. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you for always showing us your perfect love, for always doing for us what needs to be done so that we, your believing children, end up in heaven with you. Please send us your Holy Spirit and help us to fight against sin so that you don't have to show us your tough love as much. And please, no matter what, keep always showing us perfect love. We pray in Jesus' name, who is proof of your perfect love. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen.